Hi, it's Peter here. Let's get right into those seven myths. Myth number one. I would be a better photographer if I had a better camera. You've probably heard many times when you show a, an image to someone that they comment the image in a way that is pretty funny. They say that you must have a good camera because you can get so good images. And what could be possibly more wrong about photography, commenting like that? When you read a good book, what's your first thought? Is it the computer that the author has written the the book with or the word editing or the word processing software? You never ask that, but for some reason people ask about the camera when they see a nice photograph. And it, it's a total myth. It, it's something that it's really bugs me and I really don't understand why, why it is that way. But f remember that try to make the best out of your existing gear and learn about photography. That will make you better, not a new camera. And myth number two, you need a certain lens for certain genres. And this comes from the idea that when we see a photograph of a bird, it's usually taken with a long telephoto lens and it's a kind of like a portrait of a bird or a flying bird. And you need a long telephoto lens for that. Yeah, for that type of photograph you need, but you don't need a long lens for bird photography. You can use wide angle lenses for bird photography. Set your camera to a feeding station quite close. Let it stay there for a lot, for a little while. Go further back and have your OS Share app, for example, to fire the camera. You don't need a long lens for that. And the same goes with street photography, for example. You usually have a standard lens or a small wide angle lens for street photography. And yeah, that's the classical way, but it doesn't require a wide angle lens. You can use a standard lens. You can use a longer lens for that. And that's because we are so used to the classical way of making uh, street photography. But what about if you do it with a longer telephoto lens? It's not that common. And I personally really don't like that, but it doesn't matter what I like. It matters what you can achieve with that combination. And I know a lot of people are doing with the longer lens and it's totally fine. It is street photography. And, and try to overcome all these obstacles that you have and look at your existing gear and try to make the most of that. I've said it twice already in this video and most likely I will say it again. But let's go to the next myth. Megapixels matter. This probably comes from the early days of digital photography where actually it did because the first digital cameras didn't have that many megapixels and the image quality wasn't really that good. But then it did really matter. And when you get a new camera with two megapixels, six megapixels and so forth, it did make the images better. You could have more use for it. You could crop them when you have more megapixels, but it's not the thing that you need. For example, nobody has ever never asked me about the megapixels of a camera, except in the early days of digital photography, when they ask and I said, oh, well, it's six megapixels and they were like, whoa, that's that's a huge amount. Yeah, and it was back in the days. And most of the photographs today, let's say you're posting to Instagram or social media, you could do fine with six megapixels. No problem with that. It's not about the megapixels. But remember, nobody cares how many megapixels your camera has. Only your photographs matter. Myth number four, professional photographers are better than amateurs. I don't know where this comes from, but uh, if, we, if we talk about the differences of first. Okay, the differences, of course, is that an amateur can photograph whenever they feel like it. If you don't feel like photographing today, it doesn't matter. A pro, if it, if there is a gig or, or some assignments for today, you need to make those images, even though you feel not very creative during that day. You, you have a calendar where you say, okay, next Tuesday at three o'clock, I have a, a photo shoot. I need to be creative at three o'clock next Tuesday if I have a photographing session. As an amateur, you don't feel creative. So what? Don't photograph. And then there is a second thing. Pros don't have to ask their spouses when they get new gear, like amateurs usually have to, because it's a, it's a bit different thing. So that's the main difference. Most likely the image quality, there is no difference. And then a pro tip. If you're an amateur and you need to get some new gear, but you don't really want to tell your spouse, there is a pro tip for this. Buy that stuff, of course, if you have the money, then hide it in a camera cabinet for a month, for example. And then when you take it out, if your spouse asks you, oh, you, do you have a new gear or new lens, new camera? Then you can say that, no, I've had it for a while and you don't even have to lie. That works. I know someone has used it and it works perfectly. 
And myth number five, being a photographer is a glamorous job. Well, in some part it is true because we get to travel sometimes. We get to see things and places that all others might not be able to see and things like that. And of course we can do what we love. And that's, I think that's the best part of being a photographer. I would photograph anyways, but now I can do it, do it as a job. And in that part, the, the myth is kind of true. But the other side of the coin is that we need to do a lot of things that we really don't like because I started to be or started or wanted to be a photographer because I didn't want to sit at the computer and I didn't want to sit at the office. But that's a big part of our job now. You know, even the client meetings are now sitting <laughs> in front of a computer. We have to do the billing, we have to do bookkeeping and whatnot. And we spend a lot of time editing the photographs. And some of us don't like that at all. We'd rather be out there shooting photographs. So it's a regular job like any other job. And if you are an entrepreneur, like most photographers, at least here in Finland are, you have all that running the business and all that crap actually for me because I don't like it. I would just like to be out there photographing or making these videos. That's a lot more fun. So it is a good job, but it is like any other job. Sometimes it can be really, really boring. And myth number six, editing is cheating. This is something that I really don't understand because editing has been always a big part of image making. There was a photo studio in downtown Helsinki over 100 years ago. Well, there were several, but there was one that was really, really popular. And the thing was that he could make people look beautiful for, for two reasons. First of all, of course, he was a very good photographer and knew the light. The second thing is that he had a big crew of retouchers that painted the negative so that the skin looked really nice, smoothened the skin, painted it on the negative and then printed the image and people looked really beautiful. And that was his uh, secret. And it was done by editing. I don't see editing cheating at all. I think editing is, like I said, a big part of the process, the big part of the process when we make the image and, and present the image. That is how we make the story even better because we might darken parts of the image and, and lighten some parts of the image to, to fool the eye of the viewer, to make them look the photograph like we want them. And we might want to make the, the scene look like it was when we took the photograph because of course the a photograph that we take is not a hundred percent representation of the of the feeling that we had. So we might want to edit the images and I edit all my images and, and try to make them better. And of course, there is no limit how much you should edit or can edit. You can edit as much as you want. It doesn't matter. Of course, if you over edit, all of us might not like those images, but that's a different thing. It's, it's totally different. And you can even you know, fix fix the sky and change it if you want to switch it to, to another with, with AI. Totally okay. The only limitations that I think there are in editing is of course the public opinion that if you, if you want to present your images and you want to present good images, over edited images might not be that good because people don't like them. But uh, if you like them, so what? That's the most important thing. Where you do not edit images is some kind of a documentary. If it's a nature documentary or photojournalism, journalism, then it's a no-no. And remember, editing is not for making a crappy image a great image. It doesn't work. And like always, after myth number seven, there will be an extra myth. Manual mode is the holy grail of photography. I don't know where this comes from. Most likely it comes from the film era where there were a lot of cameras that did not have any automatic things. You had to do everything manually and, and master that was not easy. For, for many and that's why probably people think that having or using manual mode is the holy grail and that makes you a great photographer but that's not true you can use p mode and adjust the parameters like aperture shutter and iso to your likings and of course when we talk about manual mode we also talk about the idea that you have to know what is the relationship between shutter speed aperture and iso those you need to know but you don't have to set them manually every time you take a photograph. Of course, there are some certain thing or certain uh, photographs that you need to do that. But in most cases, in general photography, you can use P mode and then adjust the exposure value so that you get the desired amount of depth of field. Or if you want to, you know, freeze the action, you need the fast shutter speed. Or if you want some motion blur, you need a longer shutter speed. So that stuff you need to know. But using manual mode is no you know, holy grail at all. You can use any mode, but understand the combination of 
or what makes a good exposure and and how different values affect your image. And then the extra myth, photography has rules. And I have to admit, this is a bit tricky because there are certain ways that we see the world and find certain things pleasing to our eye. And one of them is like golden ratio or rule of thirds. Images that have uh, uh, com composition like a golden rule or the golden rule is inside the composition are usually pleasing. But this does not mean that we have to use them. It is a wise thing to learn about composition and, and how people see the world and what, what do we see pleasing, what does colors mean and all that stuff. But it's a good thing to learn about this because photography is also an art form. And in art, we do have some kind of rules that are good to know so that we can make best images. But to be honest, the best images are those that break these rules. And when I say breaking the rules, is me it means that uh, breaking the conventions and uh, the obvious that people are thinking that we should do. And uh, that, that is the hardest part. If you just try something different, like many say that when I ask about some photograph that why did you do this? I wanted to try something different. That's nothing because if you don't know why you are trying something different, the different does not add up to the story, then why? Then just do like everybody else does. But if you are breaking the rules first, know them and then have a purpose to break them. Break them for a reason that will make the image better. And this is not easy, but if you want to learn to be a better photographer, you need to try to think more about these things. But as I said, there are no rules because photography is an art form. Only thing that matters is the image. And if, if the image that you make is intended to be presented somewhere, then of course it matters if others like it. If not, then only thing that matters if, is that you like it. And before you go to watch some more videos, I have a teaser for you. Next Tuesday, I will post a video that will make you photograph more next year. It's going to be exciting. And if it's already out there, you can watch it from there. And if it's not, then there is a video about night photography. But hey, Thanks for watching and bye for now.